Newfoundland is a large working dog. They can be black, brown, or black and white. However, in the Dominion of Newfoundland, before it became part of the Confederation of Canada, only black and Landseer, white and black. Colored dogs were considered to be proper members of the breed. They were originally bred and used as working dogs for fishermen in Newfoundland. Newfoundlands are known for their giant size, intelligence, tremendous strength, calm disposition, love of children, and loyalty. They excel at water rescue life-saving because of their muscular build, thick double coat, webbed paws, and swimming abilities. Newfoundlands, Newfoundlands, Newfs or Newfies, have webbed paws and a water-resistant coat. Males normally weigh 65, 80 kg, and females 55, 65. But some Newfoundlands have been known to weigh over 90 kg, ranking it among the largest of dog breeds. American Kennel Club Oxy standard colors of the Newfoundland are black, brown, gray, and white. And black sometimes referred to as a Lancier. Other colors are possible, but are not considered rare or more valuable. The Kennel Club KC permits only black, brown, and white black. The Canadian Kennel Club permits only black and white black. The Landseer pattern is named after the artist Sir Edwin Henry Landseer, who featured them in many of his paintings. Federation Sinologique Internationale Vique International, Tsikai, consider the Ek Landseer, European continental type, to be a separate breed. It is a taller, more narrow white dog with black markings not bred with a Newfoundland. The Newfoundland's extremely large bones give it mass, while its large musculature gives it the power. It needs to take on rough ocean waves and powerful tide. These dogs have huge lung capacity for swimming extremely long distances and a thick, oily, and waterproof double coat which protects them from the chill of icy waters. The double coat makes the dog hard to groom and also causes a lot of shedding to occur. The droopy lips and jowls make the dog drool, especially in high heat. In the water, the Newfoundland's massive webbed paws give it maximum propulsion. The swimming stroke is not an ordinary dog paddle. Unlike other dogs, the Newfoundland moves its limbs in a down and out motion, giving more power to every stroke. The Newfoundland is known for its calm and docile nature and its strength. They are very loyal, have a mild nature, and make great working dogs. It is for this reason that this breed is known as the Gentle Giant. International kennel clubs generally describe the breed as having a sweet temper. The breed typically has a deep bark and is easy to train if started young. They are wonderfully good with children, but small children can get accidentally leaned on and knocked down. Newfoundlands are ideal companions in the world of therapy and are often referred to as nanny dogs. The Newfoundland in general is good with other animals, but its size can cause problems if it is not properly trained. Uh, Newfoundland's good, sweet nature is so important, it is listed in the breed standards of many countries. Dogs exhibiting poor temperament or aggression are disqualified from showing and should never be used to breed. The breed standard in the United States reads that sweetness of temperament is the hallmark of the Newfoundland. This is the most important single characteristic of the breed. There are several health problems associated with Newfoundland's Newfoundlands are prone to hip dysplasia, a malformed ball and socket in the hip joint. They also get elbow dysplasia and cystinuria, a hereditary defect that forms calculi stones in the bladder. Another genetic problem is subvalvular aortic stenosis sas. This is a common heart defect in Newfoundlands involving defective heart valves. SAS can cause sudden death at an early age. It is similar to having a heart attack. The breed may live to be eight to 10 years of age. 10 years is a commonly cited life expectancy. However, Newfoundlands can live up to 15 years old. The Newfoundland was originally bred and used as working dogs for fishermen in Newfoundland. In the early 1880s, 
fishermen and explorers from Ireland and England traveled to the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, where they described two main types of working dogs. One was heavily built, large with a longish coat, and the other medium-sized in build, an active, smooth-coated water dog. The heavier breed was known as the Greater Newfoundland, the smaller breed was known as the Lesser Newfoundland, or St. John's Water Dog. The St. John's Water Dog became the founding breed of modern retrievers. Both breeds were used as working dogs to pull fishnets, with the Greater Newfoundland also being used to haul carts and other equipment. It has also been proposed that the original Newfoundland that lived on the island was smaller. In theory, the smaller land race was bred with mastiffs when sold to the English, and the English version was popularized to become what we think of as a Newfoundland today. The breed's working role was varied. Many tales have been told of the courage displayed by Newfoundlands in adventuring and life-saving exploits. Over the last two centuries, this has inspired a number of artists who have portrayed the dogs in paint, stone, bronze, and porcelain. One famous Newfoundland was named Seaman, one of the most traveled dogs in human history, who accompanied American explorers Lewis and Clark on their expedition from the Mississippi to the Pacific and back, a journey that took three years. A statue of him is included in many Lewis and Clark monuments. Many children's books have been written about him. The breed prospered in the United Kingdom until 1914, and again in 1939, when its numbers were almost fatally depleted by wartime restriction. Since the 1950s, there has been a steady increase in numbers and popularity, despite the fact that the Newfoundland's great size and fondness for mud and water makes it unsuitable as a pet for many households. During the Discovery Channel's second day of coverage of the American Kennel Club Yukonuba National Championship on December 3, 2006, anchor Bob Gowen reported that Newfoundland's exhibit a very strong propensity to rescue people from water. Bowen stated that one Newfoundland alone aided the rescue of 63 shipwrecked sailors. Today, kennel clubs across the United States host Newfoundland rescue demonstrations, as well as offering classes in the field. Many harbor boat tours in Johns have a dog on board for local charm, as well as for passenger safety. Further evidence of Newfoundland's ability to rescue or support lives Saving activities was cited in a 2007 article by the BBC. The Newfoundland shares many physical traits with Mastiffs and Molosser type dogs, such as the St. Bernard and English Mastiff, including stout legs, massive heads with very broad snouts, a thick bull-like neck, and a very sturdy bone structure. Many St. Bernards have Newfoundlands in their ancestry. Newfoundlands were brought and introduced to the St. Bernard breed in the 18th century when the population was threatened by an epidemic of canine distemper. They share many characteristics of many livestock guardian dog breeds, such as the Great Pyrenees. Because of their strength, Newfoundlands were part of the foundation stock of the Leonberger which excelled at water rescue and was imported by the Canadian government for that purpose. And the now extinct Moscow water dog, a failed attempt at creating a life-saving dog by the Russian state kennel. The unfortunate outcross with the Caucasian shepherd dog begat a dog more adept at biting than rescuing. Many tales have been told of the courage displayed by Newfoundlands in adventuring and life-saving exploits. The classic Lancia markings of the breed relate to paintings like this by Sir Edwin Henry Lancier, Lion, a Newfoundland dog, 1824. Some people believe that markings such as this are indicative of a separate breed known as the Lancier, named in his honor. A famous all-black Newfoundland performed as the star attraction in Van Hare's Magic Circus from 1862 and for many years thereafter, in one of England's founding circus acts, traveling throughout Europe. The circus dog was known as the Thousand Guinea Dog Napoleon, or Napoleon the Wonder Dog. The circus owner, G. Van Hare, trained other Newfoundland dogs to perform a steeplechase routine with baboons dressed up as jockeys to ride them. Nonetheless, his wizard dog, Napoleon, was his favorite and held a special position in the magic circus. 
Napoleon would compete at jumping against human rivals, leaping over horses from a springboard, and dancing to music. Napoleon the Wonder Dog became a wildly popular act in London from his debut at the Pavilion Theatre on April 4, 1862, and onward until his untimely death many years later when he slipped and fell during a circus practice session. At the peak of his fame, his performance was described in London's Illustrated Sporting News and Theatrical and Musical Review as follows. Synopsis of his entertainment, he spells his own name with letters, also that of the Prince of Wales. And when he is asked what he would say of her most, gracious majesty, he puts down letters to form God Save the Queen. He plays any gentleman a game of cards and performs a celebrated three-card trick upon which his master backs him at 100 to 1. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest, leave a comment.